My name is Israel, right? That's my girl, my government name. Um, also known as uh, Israel Ben Israel. Um, also known as Israel Ben Israel. This is my Israel, Hawaii. By Israel. Um, and the way that y'all blessed me coming to this, this walk is real life. Um, back in 2004, um, I was church, and I've always been church. I've been church for a long time now. I was, uh, just trying to find out what's going on and um, who we are. Um, for a long time, I, you know, going, I thought they were under the curse of Ham. Person came and so forth, uh, that the Jewish tears. And so that's that's my belief. Um, then once I got into uh, high school and especially college, I just started seeing things that didn't make any sense. Um, I grew my, my, my the church that my father was attending at the time. Um, see a lot of Hebrews, a lot of black folks going for um, sitting in this church and behind the, the minister's pulpit. There would be this uh, stained glass window with this, this white man back there. So I was like, something's going on with this picture. You, you got a room full of black folks versus these white guys in these stained glass windows behind the pulpit. So that kind of started my, uh, my, my journey into things, that, and then it's kind of getting to a little bit of uh, quote unquote black nationalist uh, <laughs> understanding or misunderstanding. So um, with that, um, I, just, I was working in the prison system at that time, and um, being exposed to the inmates and everything, I ran across this uh, this belief that's known as the nation of gods and earth, or five percenters, you know, streaks thing. So I started studying that, and I uh, thought almost believed myself to be a god. <laughs> and uh, I was I was I was at school one day in the library. I was at the cell going um, to my graduate studies for uh, teaching. And uh, I was studying the five percenters because my intention was to go ahead and take the quote unquote test. Um, and so while I was doing that, I ran across this website called Christian Apologetics. And uh, basically, it was, a, it was a website of uh, black Christians pretty much apologizing for all blacks and white Christians and, and giving reasons for why any belief besides Christianity, other than Christianity, is wrong. So um, they had, they were, they were talking about these Hebrew Israelites. I was like, Hebrew Israelites, I've never heard of them before. So I was kind of interested. So I started reading about them, and they were just down Hebrew Israelites, and they were saying, uh, this is why it's not true, and this is why they're a cult or whatever. And uh, there was this one guy in particular they were, that they were hammering really hard. His name was Odai Israel. I was like, man, they really don't like him. <laughs> I was like, let me go check him out. Because <laughs> by that point in time, all you knew that Christianity was, was false. So I was like, that's definitely not the way. But um, let me try this Hebrew Israelite thing and see what's going with that. So this what happened that they had a link to the Hebrew Israelite website, to our website, uh, HebrewIsLife.org, on their website. And I clicked on it and the rest was history. Uh, went to the website, it's pretty black and green and yellow page. And <laughs> they started reading and I was like, wow, wow, wow. How, you know, I didn't know, I didn't even know the father's name at that, at that time. I was just like, wow, this is what I've been searching for my entire life, you know. Now I know who we are as people. I know who I am as a people, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. And now I understand why the blacks in this country, so quote unquote black people in this country are in the condition that we're in. You know, why is it that we're at the bottom of society? So um, I was studying, studying, studying. And um, first person, you know, you get very excited when you come to the truth. Took it to my ex-wife. And um, oh, she and her family, they, they, they basically had a conference. And they were like, we don't think it's a good idea that you become a human race like. I was like, well, really? <laughs> Not happy. Uh, it's like, uh, no, this is the truth right here. Uh, I've been waiting all my life for this information. So um, that's how I came into the walk. And that, that was back in 2004, 2005. Um, come from a family of Christians. My dad, who uh, recently passed on, he was a, a minister, Baptist minister. So um, I'd say hardly y'all for y'all open my eyes to the truth and uh, being the travel this far. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> my wife Hawaii. Um, let's see, approximately yeah. 2008. 2008. Um, towards the end of 2008. Um, she was staying in the apartment complex in Jacksonville, Florida. And uh, 
trying to make it class. So I'm moving to the school and, and uh, kind, of, kind of trying to catch the line. Can heard a voice as he was leaving our apartment. I'm saying this, run down the stairs as fast as you can. You gotta make it down the stairs right now. You gotta make it down the stairs. Like your life depends on it. So she made it down the stairs and lo and behold, Elder Haron was, was there waiting for her. And she turned around and almost bumped into him. There he was, he had a flag right there in front of him. He was giving Hawaii a flag. And um, basically, you know, they asked why do you know who you are? And um, she said no. And Elder Haron was like, well, you're a Hebrew Israelite. This is who you are, I'm gonna take this flyer. And um, Hawaii was in the press that he was Muslim. She was like, no, this guy's Muslim, he's getting this flyer back. I'm not accepting this flyer. <laughs> but um, hallelujah, um, that, was, that was the beginning of, of her, her journey, her travels. And um, she continued to study, and so uh, Elder Hawaii was very instrumental in uh, Hawaii. Matter of fact, he was the gateway as far as Hawaii coming into, into this wall. That's a brief te uh, a testimony as far as how she came into uh, to this, this real life. Um, before that time, she had actually been exposed to um, a little bit of the truth before, before that time. Uh, back in the early teens, late teens, I'm about, no, 16, 19, 19. Uh, about 19 years of age. Um, so she, you know, had been given the name Yahweh, which you know was not correct. But she had been given that name at that time. You know, so. And the truth came this time, you know, she was, was ready for it. She was ready for it. Hallelujah. Um, so as far as how we came together in the covenant uh, as, as a couple, um, I, I'm, listen, let me, let me reintroduce myself. I am the regent of District 4, and um, Hawaii is the treasurer of District 4. She is also the, the New secretary, but once uh, Wozniak resigns, <laughs> so um, if you've always had a good course relationship, uh, work relationship, um, this uh, taking care of business for the district and everything. Um, so we've always been friends, and uh, it's just a friendship that's that's developed over time. Um, so I'm basically start once once I was divorced and everything, kind of started. You know, Checking each other out. Matter of fact, um, Hawaii was instrumental in helping me go through my divorce process. Um, so that was a tremendous blessing for y'all. Um, so we kind of had our ups and downs, and um, I think for the most part we were in our own way. We were really kind of holding ourselves back. Um, but we reached the point where you know, y'all said, okay, now's the time for you to go ahead and get married. So um, one evening, Jacksonville by this time. This is Jacksonville until you left Miami and left school in Miami to come out to Jacksonville. And um, you know, I had the mind for her to come up and uh, meet my family, especially my father before he passed away. Um, so I was like, you know, I was thinking in the back of my mind, I said, this would be a good time to go ahead and uh, uh, you know, propose, make a you know, uh, uh, marriage covenant, not marriage covenant, but an engagement you know, during this time you know, while she's here in person. But uh, what I had in mind, I had in mind like sometime in like June, July, like way, way out there. Um, but um, you know, we just continued to talk and everything, and um, we decided to go to uh, pre covenant counseling with Elder, uh, Elder Embry, Emo Miami, and uh, they were more than willing to sponsor us and everything. So we spoke. Now this was supposed to be an initial uh, pre covenant counseling. But somehow another we ended up getting married. <laughs> we ended up getting married because so how, yeah, I was I was saying what I thought was <laughs> my engagement coming out. Right. Um, but when I got through saying that, uh, how well they responded, she responded in such a way that the other email they was like, okay, you know, how y'all got married. You know, <laughs> y'all married. And um, the thing about that is that they gave us such uh, tremendous advice. Uh, this deal with the story of Asnef and um, Joseph. And this, uh, the, the, the advice that we got from them is just very profound. Stuff that we can always continue to use in our marriage. Um, it's just for us making sure that no outsiders, quote, um, so to speak, come between you. Making sure that you keep the issues between yourself and, and, and um, just the husband and wife. And treating each other with respect and, and love. And 
long suffering and endurance and patience. So um, it was this tremendous advice that, that they gave us. And the thing is that they uh, have both been in marriages, you know, they both have decades, I would say, of experience being married. So we were able to, to be blessed by, by their experience. So, uh, piggyback on what he was saying. The day that uh, he and I uh, were in our initial um, pre and council meeting, I was in the parking lot, you know, waiting to get my nails done and everything because <laughs> I was barefoot too because I was planning on coming to see him, like catch a train to South Carolina to go visit with him the following day, which was on December 25th. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm in the parking lot and we were there talking right. And so he proposed to me over the phone. And I was just my mouth had just dropped. I'm like, <laughs> for like two minutes, I was like in awe. So, so in my mind, even though Elder Ivory said, Hawaii, you gonna say so? Right. He's like, well, I'm gonna be mighty proud over there. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm like, even Carefully. I said, okay, you know, <laughs> very nervous. <laughs> so, anyways, make a long story short. <laughs> make a long story short. I went home, packed up my bags, canceled my train ticket, got a refund. <laughs> <laughs> canceled my train ticket, got a refund, and then took a shower, got dressed, got on the get on the highway because I had a vehicle. I have a vehicle. Got on the highway. I didn't know where I was going there. I had like no idea how to get there. <laughs> So I called one coach, I was like, well, Coach Latovia, you know, give me directions to him, you know, because I knew his address. <laughs> and so she gave me directions on the phone, and I was out. <laughs> oh, it was maybe like 10 o'clock at night time, and I was gone. And I'm riding down the highway 95, right? I'm so scared, so nervous, it's dark, it's, it's past 7 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm scared. Yeah, there's, I'm like, and I never like really seen there's in Florida. <laughs> The border from Georgia. Georgia to South Carolina, I started seeing tears. I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. But I just kept on going. I'm like, y'all, please just protect me. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what I'm gonna have. I'm kind of crazy I'm by myself, but you know, like y'all help me. And then he don't know that I'm coming up. That I was gonna surprise him because he surprised me. Like, I was two up on the floor. I caught yeah. myself. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so anyways, you know, so I'm still talking to him here and there, like he cleaning up, getting ready for me to come to for the fall. I'm like, yeah, like everything is okay. I'm cool. I'm just hungry right now. I'm not telling them I'm on the highway driving. So, anyways, make a long story short. I get to his front door, knock on the door. He was like, I'm on the phone with him at the same time. He was like, Oh, let me see what is at the door. I think it's my cousin Richard. You know, he comes to the door and got a gun. So I wanted to be face to face with him and before the father. And also, you know, I wanted, you know, to do some other stuff too. You know. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you know. We had to go find a chamber for those, you know, for that time. So. <laughs> 
So you yeah, actually ended up taking the second covenant uh, once she arrived that, that night. We took the second covenant mm -hmm. uh, with you as, as our witness. That was all right. Yeah. And, uh, so what, like, what, how many months? About five. Five months? Five months. Yeah. Yeah, so Every five months on the 20, yeah. 24th. January, February. Oh, oh. hey, yeah, almost five months. Yeah. So, uh, our family was very receptive of us. Yeah, I know me. I don't like her. She had a chance to go. It's like uh, one of the chances to be the, uh, my father for me passed away. And that was a blessing that it didn't go to the Irish family, of course. The plan was for her to come up in July or June. Well, I thought he passed away in January. Yeah. So how the y'all? So it's definitely the y'all's hand in there. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And um, you know, but that's it. I, I, of all the women that he's met, you know, it's like she is one whose spirit agrees with his, agrees with him. Yeah. He, he definitely pulled off her. And um, the, the blessing is that even that um, she was able to kind of take care of him during his last last days of life and everything. So that's very phenomenal. So you look at uh, y'all, uh, you know, one person being removed from your life, but y'all's gift to someone else you know, in, in your life. And I, I truly believe that. Right one time, how are we out? How are we out?